Um, good morning. I, I'm Barry Zorman interviewing Jay Beiser at the um, Valley of the Sun JCC on November 9th, 2008. Um, how did how did you um, come to move to Arizona and what was Jewish life like then? Well, what happened was we came here for a marketing research conference and uh, we looked at the beautiful trees. Um, it was just gorgeous. We came here in February, of course. And when we were flying back to Philadelphia, it was a snowstorm. So my wife said, that's it. We're moving to Arizona. Um, we came here in August. So we initially came here in February. It was cold. We came back in August when it was very, very hot. Um, what was the Jewish community like? We joined Bethel, which was the center of the Jewish community back then. It was the central Phoenix. Uh, the, the JCC at that time was on Maryland. Um, we actually enrolled our kids in Hebrew school when he was two years old. So we actually were in the, the synagogue prior to even getting a house here. Um, and the community was really uh, about 40,000 Jews. In fact, what happened in 1982, I was involved in the demographic study in this community. And, and basically what it was is it was the central Phoenix had about 50% of the Jewish population. All of the community organizations were there, um, the Federation. And then what happened probably in the 2000s, I was also involved in the demographic study, there was a gigantic growth during that period of time and what happened was the population shifted to Scottsdale. So we went from 44,000 Jews to about 115,000 and the majority of Jews now lived in the northeast uh, Scottsdale area. So it's been a dramatic change in the community here. Um, my children went to Valley Jewish Day School which doesn't exist anymore. They went to Camp LeBeau which doesn't exist anymore. But there's probably 10 times more Jewish organizations here than there were in the late 70s. How did you get involved in the Jewish um, surveys? Um, well, part of being in marketing research, but we were also involved in young leadership of the Federation um, with Larry Cohen, who now, believe it or not, he was executive director then, now he's president, so times have changed. Um, so we were involved in young leadership. I got involved in the, in the Jewish community through that organization. And um, you know, it's interesting to see how the community has grown in those 30 plus years um, in terms of not just the people but the sophistication and all the new people coming in. So it was just, it was just an interesting time in the 70s. Now it's a more dynamic time. How long did it take you to, from moving from Philadelphia to here to feel like this was, Phoenix was your home? Um, my wife is very involved in Jewish organizations. So the first time we actually came here, we got involved in Shalom, Arizona, which doesn't exist anymore. We met a lot of friends, and it was, it's, it was like a welcome wagon for the Jewish people who came to the community. So we all met at the JCC, uh, and we, you know, you got common bonds with kids your age, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then what happened is we started getting involved in Hadassah and Ort and all of the Jewish organizations that exist here. So, in fact, if you were looking at my wife's calendar right now, probably there's three things a day that we go to um, regarding any type. Like, for instance, tonight we're coming for the uh, Crystal Knock. Uh, we have Jewish theater this afternoon. So we basically have, I, I would say, extremely involved in every aspect, not just in the, the synagogue, um, not just in the organizational, but also involved in the day-to-day -day lives of Jewish people in this community. So we're, we're very much ingrained in it. And it probably took us, oh, I would say, about a, a month to get involved. Um, I know you partially from one of the synagogues and also RMD. Mm -hmm. um, um, can you explain what that is and how you got involved okay. with that? Um, that was a very interesting one. What we did there, um, we had a meeting that we're going to honor one of the older couples, uh, Francis and Irving Horn, who just passed away, uh, who started the RMD, which is the Israeli Ambulance and Red Cross. And it was run by the uh, more retired community, and we were going to honor him. So no one stepped up to be dinner chairs. I ended up stepping up to be dinner chair. As a result of that, after the dinner, they said, well, now what are we going to do? Because they're retiring. So Barbara Zemmel and myself took that upon our, our, our own efforts 
to build what we thought was a pretty good uh, program. It started from nothing, and what we've done with that program, um, uh, we did Partners for Life, which we created a program to educate kids from kindergarten, eighth grade. We educated 3,000 kids, um, won the Bell Latchman Award. We had uh, foundation grants to do that. Uh, we raised thousands and thousands of dollars and educated kids about Israel and what their role is in helping save lives. Uh, we also created uh, the Judea Culture Orchestra, which is a unique thing. What we did is we said, we're going to get an orchestra, which is the Phoenix Symphony Orchestra, which will only play Jewish composers' music. We will put on a show with singers, dancers, and MCs. We had Pat McMahon. And the purpose of that it was actually to educate people about the uh, richness of Jewish culture and music and contributions to the United States and also raise money. So what we've done so far is we put on four concerts. We've sold out the Scottsdale Center for the Arts each time, and each concert raises over $50,000. So we've raised a quarter of a million dollars by putting on this concert that was unique to the community. What's motivated you to be involved, so involved in the community, to be involved in more than in several synagogues? Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I look at is I've been very blessed. I've, I've had medical issues related in my life. My wife has had medical issues. Um, I raised my two sons in the day school programs here. It's very important for me to give back in this community. And this community, unlike other larger communities, um, whether it was in 1970 or 2008 when we're talking today, it's critical to get involved and it's easy to get involved. I was, I was involved in the Melton program, I'm on the board of the Bureau of Jewish Education, we're with Hillel, teaching scholars. Everything is open for you in this community, so there's no barriers for entry into, into helping out and doing anything. And this community is very open in terms of somebody walks in the door and says, I'd like to volunteer. They say, well, here's what would you like to do and how would you like to help us? So it's very inviting, it's easy to do, and you don't have to be rich like in other communities to throw money around, but you just get involved and do good things for the community. So it's, it's unlike a more mature community like in Philadelphia where I was brought up, where it's harder to get involved because there's multiple generations. Here everybody's new, it's easy to get involved. The things that are important to us, my wife and myself, and my son has now moved back from uh, Rhode Island, the things that are important about this community is that you see it growing. You see something that's so different in this community that's unlike others. For instance, I wanted to get all of the charity groups that support Israel together, to work together. When I talked to my national board, they said, well, you really shouldn't do that because back east, everybody does their own thing. One thing that's really nice here is I could pick up the phone, walk in the office at Hadassah, Weitzman, JNF, and they all know me because we all work together and we're all willing to work together. So this is so unique, this, this environment that we work in here, and I hope that we don't lose that going forward as we get bigger in the future because it's good to keep that smallness but that dynamic part of what we're doing because other, other parts of the United States that have large Jewish communities have large donors, large organizations, and they're, they don't work together like we do. So our partnership as, as charity organizations and synagogues uh, and the Bureau of Jewish Education, it, it's unique to here. So that experience is so different than anywhere else. Oh, thank you so much. For, thank you for interviewing. And thank you for giving me this opportunity.